Hi everyone, welcome back to a new video and in this we're going to take a look at what I think is going to be a title that releases next year and I'll talk about why I think it's going to release next year um, a little bit later on but <clears throat> that title is uh, Project Motor Racing um, but I can't talk about Project Motor Racing without talking about how we got to Project Motor Racing because if you rewind a few years Project Motor Racing started life as Project Cars 4 and has been through what I think is quite an interesting um, journey to get to uh, where we are now with Project Motor Racing and I'd like to look back on that journey um, with a little bit of history to it so if that's what you're interested in Settle down, grab yourself a drink, and uh, let's have a chat about it. And by the way, if you do like this video, please do hit the like button. And if you want to see more content like this, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified when new content gets uploaded. Right, are we ready? Let's settle in. So, Project Cars, the original title, launched in 2015. Now, um, Slightly Mad Studios, Ian Bell, and a load of other people involved in all of this have a much longer history in sim racing than that, but that's not really the focus of this video, so I'm going to uh, kind of like not dwell on that because it will make this even more long-winded and complicated than it already is. Um, so yeah, Project Cars, the original was launched in 2015, um, originally on PC as part of their uh, world of mass development, kind of crowdfunding. Um, and when it launched, whilst it was not perfect, but then again, what title does launch as a perfect finished product, it was a very interesting, certainly to me, product. Um, I wasn't gaming on PC back then, I was purely a console player. Um, and at the time it came out, it was, I think, almost unarguably um, the closest console racers had had to a hardcore sim um, in that regard. And it it was a bit rough around the edges, particularly with regard to what you had to do to get decent force feedback out of it. But it blew a lot of um, the competition out of the water in a lot of ways. Not necessarily as a completed package, um, but certainly the live track, weather, uh, day-night cycle, etc. And for a lot of people, it had a really nicely curated car and track list as well. Not the biggest out there, but arguably one of the most interesting. So, people sat up and paid attention at that point. Now, fast forward two years and Project Cars 2 released. And Project Cars 2 was effectively everything the original Project Cars was, um, but more, basically. Um, it had a kind of attempt at a career mode that was reasonably interesting behind it. Um, it increased the car count and car roster. It did lose a few nice cars, unfortunately. Um, added new tracks, etc, um, etc. Et and it was around about this point I was also progressing over to PC racing as well, although I first picked it up again on console. Um, and once again, it, it kind of, in a lot of ways, set a benchmark for um, simulation. But again, wasn't a perfect product. There was a lot of things that were still a bit niggly, a lot of things that weren't perfect with it. But we were heading in a really solid direction with all of this. Now, we knew post Project Cars 2, once the initial DLC and the updates had kind of dried up, that they were probably, Slightly Mad Studios that is, working on a successor to this. And in the meantime, in November 2019, Slightly Mad Studios was bought by Codemasters. This is going to become quite important as we get a little further, a little bit further along. Now, most people at the time, myself included, saw that as a good thing. Um, it was going to put a bit more publishing clout and uh, money behind Slightly Mad Studios. This round the potential to uh, make the next Project Cars an absolutely mind-blowing sim and leave behind all of the issues of the previous two titles, you know, rounding off those edges, etc. Um, and when I say issues for the first two, they, to me, they were never game-breaking. Not for me, anyway. 
So, um, <laughs> Project Cars 3 came along, and uh, I'm not going to go into huge amounts of detail about what went wrong with Project Cars 3 on this video. Um, you can find plenty of other videos on my channel um, around what went wrong with Project Cars 3. But in summary, let's just say it was not the product that most people were expecting from the marketing. And it certainly was not all the sim you could ever want, which is one of the things Ian Bell, um, or one of the Bells, or somebody at Slightly Mad Studios marketing team, anyway, claimed about it. It definitely wasn't that. Now, that's not to say it was a bad title, because I often very inaccurately get accused by uh, some quarters of hating on Project Cars 3, and that's actually not true. Um, I don't have a major issue with Project Cars 3. I think it's a good um, arcade stroke beginner sim title um, that, that is quite enjoyable to play, particularly with a controller. Um, yeah, you know, a few beers, pick up a controller, bang, it, it's a bit of fun. The grind is not well balanced in it, and for some reason it was visually the weakest of the uh, three Project Cars titles that had come. Um, but overall, it, it was okay. I, I didn't mind it. It was just badly marketed more than anything else. It wasn't a successor to Project Cars 1 and 2. It was a sidestep into a more approachable, arcade-ish style title. And there's nothing wrong with that. Those of you who've watched the channel will know I'm a big fan of arcade racers as well as full-blown sims. Um, but it, it just wasn't the title that people were expecting. Um, and as a result, the sim racers that were expecting a successor to the first two titles kind of like were massively disappointed and a lot of them did slate it for the way it was presented. And because people looking for a more accessible arcade style title uh, were put off by the fact that it was very much marketed as a successor to the first two titles, um, they avoided it like the plague, and as a result, it absolutely bombed. It really did not sell anything like I think SMS and Codemasters were expecting it to. And it didn't help that the marketing teams at probably both SMS and Codemasters doubled down on an awful lot of this as well. Um, and I think it's a sign of the lack of belief in that that men. In December 2020, now keep in mind Project Cars launched in August 2020, so we are talking only four or so months later, um, Ian Bell on Twitter teased Project Cars 4 um, via a series of um, tweets that basically, well, I'm going to show all of these on screen, there's going to be a lot of screenshots in this video, uh, you know, talking about leaf shadowing on every other leaf, Project Cars 4 will be the most realistic simulation made in every area, in every way. Um, it, he went on about leaves an awful lot, you'll be able to read that uh, an awful lot. The leaves, uh, leaves affected, live leaves affected by vortices on AI cars hitting the windscreen of the player car. You know, it, it, it's... It's mad. And interestingly, um, there was a tweet from a guy called Neil Bailey who asked, hopefully, what is happening is the Project Car series is going back to its roots. Project Cars 2 is still the best racing game ever made. Please go back to simulation style play and make Project Cars 3 the best thing ever. Um, and Ian Bell replied saying they wanted to go down that route, um, turn everything up to 11, and then in a separate tweet, we learned our lesson with Project Cars 3. No one will touch us with Project Cars 4, which could be read a number of ways and probably wasn't the best thing to tweet. But the main thing is, all of this, all of these tweets, then get deleted. So they all got deleted and everything disappeared. Um, we then go forward a couple of months to February 2021 and Electronic Arts EA by Codemasters. Now, for a lot of people, this was immediately a, ooh, this is going to be interesting moment. Um, because we do for a second have to step back before Project Cars here. Ian Bells and Slightly Mad Studios made two titles for EA, which were in the um, 
shift the, the Need for Speed series. It was Shift One and Shift Two, um, and they were kind of simulation titles and motorsport focused titles within the Need for Speed um, kind of like ecosystem and series of titles and. They, they had their interesting moments, and you could definitely see some of the influence in them in the Project Cars titles, but it was not a happy relationship between EA, um, Slightly Mad Studios, and Ian Bell, and they parted company rather acrimoniously. So there was a lot of bad blood between the two parties, and most people thought this probably was the writing on the wall for Ian Bell at Codemasters, given that they were now owned by Electronic Arts. And sure enough, if we fast forward to October 2021, Ian Bell then leaves Codemasters. Now in this time period, there was um, basically the end of lifing of Project Cars and the delisting of a lot of Project Cars titles as well. Um, I'm again not going to go into that because that to a degree is not really relevant to what we're talking about here, um, but it is important to note that you can't actually new digitally buy any of these titles, the Project Cars titles anymore. And I have also put a... Um, I don't think I'll bother, I might put a link to it, but I have done a video about why that was a bad thing, particularly for Project Cars 2. Um, if we then fast forward from October 2021 to March 2020, um, what happens was Ian Bell pops up a mystery tweet, which you can see on screen now. Imagine RF2 physics tweet in an Unreal 5 world. I do, dreams can come true. Um, and that was it. That was it for a while. So we have to go from March 2022 to September 2022 when we get the unveiling of GTR Revival, um, a sequel to GTR 2. Now, the original GTR and GTR 2, um, Ian Bell worked on when he was with Simbim um, and part of that, and he was part of the team that made those titles, and they, to this day, are phenomenally popular titles. So everybody was kind of like, whoa, this is great, there's a new GTR title, and then everybody went, hold on a second, didn't the team behind uh, Race Room also announce that they were working on a GTR 2 successor called GTR 3? Um, and, and that was true at the time they had, so this again was kind of like, well, this is a bit confusing, Who's actually doing what here? Um, now, GTR 3 from Race Room did uh, a short while later get canned itself, so that's not coming. Um, they also mentioned that the new studio that Ian Bell had set up was called Mildly Annoyed Games. Um, and he did a little bit of Ian Bell trolling with the uh, logo and that it was an Adobe stock image and things like this. Which again, it, you can go and look all of this stuff up. A lot of what I'm talking about here can be found in a, um, a forum thread over at GT Planet. And that I will link down in the description so that you can go and have a look at that. But, effectively... Despite the trolling and the fact that Slightly Annoyed Games was probably never going to be the final studio name, that, oh sorry, Mildly Annoyed Games, that's what we got. So, there we go. Um, we again had to wait a little bit of uh, time for more info. So, again, from September, this time to November 2022, and we get news that uh, the original Stig from Top Gear, Ben Collins, was joining the GTR Revival team as the chief handling consultant, uh, which was good news because Ben Collins was the chief handling consultant for the original Project Cars and for Project Cars 2. He had no involvement in Project Cars 3 and now was coming back on board for the next game, GTR Revival. So after that, we then get uh, December and we get some in-game screenshots and we also get a studio name change. Okay, so the studio is now called Straight Four Games. Um, we've got confirmation from people working, well, it's not strictly confirmation, but from working out from Ian Bell's um, kind of like drive by tweet earlier in the year and a few other things, such as the screenshots, people worked out that it was almost certainly working in uh, Unreal Engine, most likely Unreal Engine 5. Um, and 
does a few bits and pieces change, um, some videos shared, etc. And a launch date was teased as well, which was Q4 2024, which interestingly enough happens to be when I'm recording this video. What we also got in December was a little bit of a flurry of activity. So we also got that um, GTR Revival will be the most moddable auto platform ever, which is interesting because whilst um, Project Cars 1 and Project Cars 2 never officially so uh, supported modding, people crowbarred it in there, but it never officially supported it, the GTR series always did. So this looked like a return to its roots from that point of view. Um, we also got a hint at a new World of Mass Development 3. So this is the kind of crowdfunding system that uh, Slightly Mad Studios had used before, and it looked like straightforward games were going to use again. Um, it's WMD 3 because they used it for Project Cars 1, Project Cars 2. They didn't use it for Project Cars three so skipping that one this will be WMD three so we get all of that busy 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 um, we then have to wait um, a little while longer for we then have to wait a little while longer January not long at all we're into 2023 now um, so we get another tweet from Ian saying so our next game is pretty much consolidating down to a sim inspired by the likes of Project Cars 2 but improved where needed, and GTR2 improved where needed. And you can all uh, and you all can input all the way as soon as we have a couple of polished tracks and cars using the new engine to ship out. So again, hinting that there's going to be either WMD or there's going to be early access or some form of beta testing, um, and also a clear indication of where the roots for this title lie. Move to February, so only another month, and this this has got the feel of, you know, some kind of marketing ramping up here, which is actually really good. So here we go, we've got, we have a proof of concept nailed, and something on the way for sim racing that really is a complete game-changing USP. Would tell you exactly what it is, but we're looking to patent it as it deserves it, as does the member of staff who created it. Watch this space. So, what is this thing? And while we're waiting for that, we also get um, the new website posted up. So we've got a new website, straightforward.com. That's still up there, and it's still a source of information around what's going on at Straightforward Games. But it, it's not always quite that straightforward. Uh, in the meantime, we get confirmation that the patent has been applied for, so I can now show you this. Uh, we used a different game to show the flexibility of the system. We have more to come, which will raise the bar in other areas. Rejoice! Um, and a YouTube link that is now private, so you can't do anything with that at all. Sorry about that. Um, so what was this um, thing that was being teased here? Well... We then got a tweet the next day that actually was a little bit clearer with what it is, which is AI synthesized race engineer using the OG Stig Ben Collins' voice with another YouTube link. Do you think that YouTube link works? Nope, that one's dead again. Um, so we can't use that one to see what it is. However, we do then get some more info on this the next day. Um, pit to car and car to pit engineer, fully AI synthesized radio by Ben Collins Stig, with a little post processing added by our professor uh, Baystead. Much more to come, but I suspect this is an adequate indication of where we're going. And this pit to car demo video is still up because this is on Professor Baystead's YouTube channel rather than the um, Straight 4 Games or GTR Revival YouTube channel. Um, the GTR Revival YouTube channel, for reasons we'll come on to, doesn't exist anymore. So we've got all of this coming up and there's loads of stuff going on with all of this and we get to see a bit of a demo around this which is really nice to see in all honesty um I got a little bit out of sorts with my timeline it's february yep this is when the website went up um my notes and my images i'm using to put this together not always aligned my bad there and i do apologize but back into it they then start talking about um the sim audio and we get some demos here with a two liter bdg cosworth engine um and that is still up it's a 
black screen it's just audio up on YouTube but you can go and listen to that um, and then they've got a guess the engine type cylinders will do first correct answer wins free gold status on WMD um, so they were still looking to push WMD at this point uh, PS this is running in the engine for those in doubt um, and we get more info still on Professor Stephen uh, Baystead, who is the audio and musical director and some of his background. And that info is still up on Straight Four's uh, website if you want to go and look at it. So we're getting a load of info. This, as I say, this is pretty much all coming out in February 2023. We do then have to wait until April, early April, for our next piece of news, and that is that Straightforward Studios have secured a play on publishing deal. Um, now, I wasn't particularly familiar with this publisher um, when I was looking into this, but they've got, or rather had, because they got into extreme financial uh, difficulties, and this obviously never came to pass because we never actually got a um, GTR Revival title, but we need to talk more about that. Um, so they got um, an independent developer, publisher and distributor um, to sign up with them, uh, which was again good news, and again indicates things are moving forward. We've got some traction. Are we online for a Q4 2024 release here? Would be good, wouldn't it? Now, stepping sideways, but interesting, we get confirmation then in May that Straight Four Studios and Razor Studios are still working together and still have a strategic partnership. Now, this is important because it does show that the two are still working. There wouldn't be any reason to keep working unless there was something going on still with the Madness engine and some cooperation. That might just have been, we're licensing it, you get on with it, Razor. It may, may have been more in-depth than that. We, in all honesty, will never know. Um, and this was also an opportunity to talk about the fact that they are going to be releasing a new title on PC, PlayStation 5, and Xbox. Interestingly, at this point, it says a yet unnamed sim racing title will launch on PC, PlayStation 5, and Xbox, um, and will be the spiritual return to the glory days featuring a new bespoke physics engine and cutting-edge graphics. So that's interesting because you know this is the first indication of we're completely abandoning the Madness engine um, and moving away from that for a new physics engine. And also, um, it's a bit odd at this point, unnamed sim racing title because we've been working with the assumption that it's GTR Revival up until this point. So anyway, we then in July get some more new screenshots. So unedited in-game screenshots from AML, plenty of GT uh, racing classics for our earliest seminal game are uh, from our earliest seminal games are coming your way. Um, so we get a load of stuff around this. We also in July get an interesting um, tweet here in a whippy whip says it took Razor over three years to fix the broken physics in Madness and Setter. They finally achieved it in AMS 2.1.5. And Ian Bell responds to this, the Setter time model wasn't broken. Razor found some interference from the legacy ISI code related to damping on the tyre. Regardless, we're not using Setter 1. Setter 2 and the rest of the physics are from scratch and I've put together what I consider to be the best team for the work. So this is confirmation that they moving on to a later version of the tyre model that they used in the Madness engine and that the physics engine has been built from scratch. Or rather, that's what's being claimed. But this is lots of info being teased out. Now, move on to August. And if you remember, we had that press release uh, with Razer that said it was an unnamed game. Well, in August, we got a new GTR Revival logo teased. Um, or rather, this is one of 20 options, and this was Ian Bell's favourite. So, big indicator that you know, they are still working on GTR Revival, and it's called GTR Revival. What we also got was some more unedited in-game runtime shots showing time of day in GTR Revival. So, everything is going ahead with that. 
We also then get a glut of information in October. So we get some more screenshots. Nissan, Jaguar, Group C, all good stuff. And we also get the Lister Storm, which was a kind of halo car from the GTR 1 and GTR 2 titles. Um, Real-time screenshots, interview with Lister CEO Lawrence Whitaker. Um, we get, uh, we also get Dodge Viper. Um, so we've got a lot of stuff coming out, a lot of screenshots, lots of lovely stuff that's thrown our way. Um, and also in October teased that uh, they'll have an iRacing style system, but it will be free or how about one tenth of the price? Would the numbers work? So it's basically we don't know how much we're going to charge you for it, but we're potentially looking at an iRacing system for the multiplayer and online element of it. So there we go. Uh, we then get to grass. Ian Bell's back to vegetation. We haven't had some vegetation stuff since the initial tease of Project Cars 4 uh, back in December 2020. But he talks about um, seeing lovely 3D glass in, uh, grass, not glass, grass in preview pics. And then it's kind of like shaved and two-dimensional or just a texture when it's in the shipped product. Uh, well, that is pre-alpha in-game engine grass um it's an odd thing to shout about but ian seems to like vegetation so i'm not going to knock the man for that he's going green in his own way move on to december so a little bit of delay and we get some physics info teased around this which is well we've just hit a milestone our new physics in the early form with our new graphics engine in early form an hour from the start physics guru Doug Arno testing in the 296 I uh, you asked for early moving footage what's missing tons head physics movements some audio some lots what are we pushing for the most accurate and reactive physics ever delivered in-game animation like wheel directly connected to the underlying physics with no perceivable lag um, later a feeling of really being there with all the excitement that brings we're getting there um so a lot of excitement a lot of pushing forward hitting milestones things like this really good news we are approximately a year away from the original proposed go live uh, sorry release at this point um of q4 2024 we then get nothing absolutely nothing for five months until may when Isabel tweets a good sim needs vr in my opinion we were a release title for on oculus rift and vive uh, unreal doesn't work for the foregoing so i've made a huge call and it's an engine change something more uh, amenable and flexible detail soon now this is an interesting and to be blunt fairly ballsy tweet to put out um and a decision to make. One thing that I would agree with is with um, the original Project Cars 1 and Project Cars 2 and also the Madness Engine working in Automobilista 2, um, I've always rated the Madness Engine as being basically the best sim racing platform for VR, um, sorry, engine, and I suppose platform for VR there is out there. Um, I think it's unmatched in terms of how it works, how well it works, and nothing else comes close in my personal opinion. Uh, they dropped the ball with VR in um, Project Cars 3. It's not as well implemented as the other Madness Engine titles. In fact, I'd argue it's the worst implemented in VR of all of them, but it's still better than a lot of VR titles out there in other engines. Um, and at this point, um, Straightforward Games and GTR Revival was using Unreal Engine 5. And Unreal Engine 4 and Unreal Engine 5 it does not play well with VR. We only have to have a look at just how much demand on your system uh, Assetto Corsa Competizione um, uses in terms of VR and how poorly implemented EA uh, WRC 24 is from a VR point of view. Both titles running Unreal Engine. So from that point of view, it's absolutely the right call. But at this point, completely changing the graphics engine you're using in a title is a fairly major thing to do. And this could have been the death of this entire thing. Making a call this major at this point in time can absolutely kill a project. But 
I do want to actually quite heavily praise Ian Bell for not falling into what's called the sunk cost fallacy, where it's kind of like, oh, we've invested so much time in Unreal Engine, we have to make it work. When you reach a point that it's not going to hit one of your key goals, the sunk cost fallacy can also drown you. So arguably, I actually think that they made the right call on this. I won't know whether I'm right on this until we actually get the title launched and I get to try it in VR for myself. But Personally, I think by avoiding the sunk cost fallacy at this point in time, this was absolutely the right call to make. But it was a risky one, without a shadow of a doubt. We then have to wait a few months to July, when we find out that, basically, it's changed names. It is now no longer GTR Revival, and it's back into the Project Cars kind of family, and we have Project Motor Racing. So Project Motor Racing and a new partner, which is Giants Software. So this is announced. Um, you can see in some of the screenshots that they are clearly in a pit garage somewhere. We would like to get confirmation that that was Silverstone. Um, and this did kind of throw a lot of people um, because... The Giants engine and Giant Games team work on Farm Simulator games. The Farm Simulator games. Um, and that is the game's engine. Now, we did get some more teaser shots, and I've got to be blunt, the Lister Storm that they uh, used to tease this looks absolutely fantastic in my view. I think that looks really good. For pre-alpha footage, that looks damn good. Now, they've probably taken the assets they already had and reworked those into the Giants engine, but it's doing a damn good job of it. And we've also got a teaser shot here of the Lister Storm at Lime Rock Park, um, which helps confirm Lime Rock Park's coming, and I love Lime Rock Park as a track, so that's a plus point for me. Uh, but we did then also get lots of people joking with uh, images like this, um, where we have cars towing farm equipment and things like that. But that's a little bit unfair, although I get that it's tongue-in-cheek and it was kind of to be expected. <clears throat> but it's important to remember that all they're actually using the Giants engine for is primarily the visuals. They're going to plug their own physics engine into this. And this screenshot is not representative of what the current version of Farm Simulator can look like. Because the current version of Farm Simulator, Farm Simulator 25, looks like the image I've got up on screen for you at the moment. And let's be honest, there's nothing wrong with the way that looks at all. One interesting thing, and this came out a little bit later, but I want to talk about it now because it's the appropriate time to talk about it. And that is, most engines that games are built on are built around shooters of some sort. First-person shooters in particular. That That's where an awful lot of titles are built. Either first-person or third-person shooters. That's what their engines are built around. Engines are not typically built around vehicles and vehicle simulation so actually there's a chance that tying their new physics engine with the giants visual engine is actually a really smart thing to do because giants is built around vehicle simulation admittedly it's a completely different type of vehicle simulation that we generally talk about in the sim racing community but it's still vehicle simulation so this actually might turn out to be a remarkably clever move again we won't really know until we start seeing some footage of it and importantly when we get hands-on with it but it might not be as completely mad as it first seems so another interesting and potentially good call from Ian Bell here and I've got to give credit the rest of the straight four games team because they're going to have been part of it as well so we then so all of this is coming out in August we then get some more in August screenshots um, showing internal and external um, texture details this once again is on the list of storm um, and what then happens in, um, this will be about October, so a short while ago, we get 
a YouTube channel set up with a 24 second teaser video. And then over the last couple of months, we've had a total of three videos posted. Um, they're called Roots, Building a Project Re uh, Motor Racing, Episode 1, Episode 2, and only the day before I recorded this, Episode 3 landed. Now, these are generally talking heads stuff around um, a, an event at Silverstone, where some of the shots we saw earlier on came from. Um, there's a lot of talk about how they're capturing the cars, how they're getting drivers to check and test the cars, doing back-to-backs from track to the sim you know, in the pits so that they get that immediate comparison and get that feedback of what's missing from a subjective point of view what's working from an objective point of view but interestingly we in the third video um, and I will link to the YouTube channel down below um, we get a lot of info about um, the physics model that they're working and running so we get confirmation that the main body of the physics engine is running at 720 hertz which is basically it's updated 720 times a second so that, that that's that, that's pretty quick that's that's quick enough for what we generally need that's a good degree so and what they mean by the main body of the physics engine here they confirm in the video is vehicle movement tires and suspension are being updated at 720 hertz they're also clear that the drive line so the engine the um so the actual Vehicle engine, not the physics engine, the vehicle engine, the um, drivetrains, diffs, etc. So the entirety of the drivetrain is being updated at 7200 hertz. But we then get information that the internal combustion engine modeling is, they claim, accurate and updated every two degrees of crank rotation. Now that's potentially 36,000 hertz. So that's hugely accurate now the tricky bit for them having different parts of your physics engine running at different tick rates that's what we're talking about here means that you've got a discrepancy so your internal combustion engine is updating at 36,000 hertz but it's got to communicate that at some point to a drive line that's updating at a slower tick rate 7,200 hertz and you've then got a drive line a drive train that's updating at 7,200 hertz talking to a physics engine for the rest of the vehicle that's updating at 720 hertz and these discrepancies in tick rates unless you manage and account for them can cause problems so it'll be interesting to see how they deal with that we probably won't get any real confirmation of how they deal with it unless they write a paper on it but we'll feel it if it's wrong we will definitely feel it in the physics engine so it will be interesting but this is not a problem that is unique to um, Project Motor Racing. It, it's it's one that exists in most physics engines. So, but it is interesting to get this level of detail and clarity. We very rarely get this, and in fact, this is the first time we've really had this kind of detail since Project Cars 2. Um, and I actually put a video together explaining how Project Cars 1, Project Cars 2, we got loads of info about what was going on on this kind of thing. And Project Cars 3, we got absolutely none, which was what raised a lot of red flags for me. So we're back to that kind of detail again. Um, you'll also, if you watch that third video, notice they talk a lot about one-dimensional simulations of things like fluid compression, etc, etc. All this is, if you want to translate it into um, kind of like a, a bit more palatable or easily understood languages, it means they're simulating it in code. Okay, that's what they're doing. They're simulating it in code. It's one-dimensional, it's written down, it's formulas. That's that kind of thing. So that's where we currently are. And that is the very long, um, and if you've reached the end of this, congratulations, because it's been a long video, um, journey from Project Cars 4 to where we are now with Project Motor Racing. Now, they have teased that it's going to release at some point in 2025, and it will be interesting to see if it does. I get the feeling it might do. We're, this looks like the 
ramp up of a marketing campaign to me so it'll be interesting to see where we go it'll also be interesting to see if we get an early access pc only approach um the same as we've got for assetto corsa evolutione um or whether we will get a cross-platform PC current gen uh, console release all in one go. Um, and also, you know, if we start seeing things like track lists and car list tees soon in more detail, that, that's another good indicator. But it does feel like 2025 is the right year for project motor racing so let me know your thoughts down in the comments below do you think we've got project motor racing around the corner are you interested in it have you been burnt too much by ian bell um, or are you willing to give it another go uh, let me know in the comments down below and uh, as i mentioned at the start if you've enjoyed this please do hit the like button thanks very much for watching everyone take care bye